The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? The start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed. It's ripened into a precious friendship. I could have never seen what was coming for me. Hangs at the skate park, hangs by the beach. My life, it feels like. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Big Dog Travis, Woof Woof, Big Dog McElroy. Fuck. See, you lost it last week. This is Griffin McElroy. You lost it last week, Travis. I don't know that you're going to be able to get back on that log. I did it bad. I did a bad job. But Mm. I'm about to do a good job. Oh, because I feel like it doesn't. No, hey, listen. Here's here's what I need you guys to do. This one time... Just like get on board and get on board the game because it's a good game that I've invented. Okay, just don't try. Just start now. Okay, so here's how it works. I started following this Twitter account uh, that is SNL hosts intro. Okay, and it's SNL like the you know the performer guest introing the musical guest for the week. So right. I'm going to tell you guys the combination of the performer introing the musical guest, and I want you guys to take a guess at how good they are at selling that they're excited to be introing that musical guest. Okay. Are you going to play the audio of yes. it? Yes, Justin, I'm going to send you the links now for the various videos. Okay. Up first, now I want you to think, what do I know about these two people, right? And I think that this is going to be an easy one to ease us in, right? Okay. Courtney Cox introducing Dave Matthews Band. This is important. Courtney Cox or Courtney Cox Arquette? This is Courtney Cox. Okay, okay. okay. The original. Okay, uh-huh. I think she's going to be like this. Okay, the t- I think we're guessing the tone, right? Yes, and yes, It's yes. like exci- excited for you at your yeah. bachelorette party. All I know is that she's going to s- absolutely scream the name Dave Matthews Band. Okay, see, I don't think that. Here's what I'm predicting. I'm predicting like... I'm excited. I got this for you as a bachelorette party present. Yeah. And I know this is your favorite band. I'm not that excited to see them, but like, here they are. I got them. I booked them. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, let's let's, let's hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Matthews Band. Not even a little bit. Not that level of excitement. Not any level of excitement. It's like she's introducing the speaker for like an off, 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 off Broadway TED talk. It's yeah. nothing. A different to her. Dave Matthews band yes. was originally going to do it. She, and this yeah. bad new Dave Matthews band. She, she, she met Dave Matthews band backstage and did not care for it. <laughs> <laughs> they dumped a big jar of relish on her shirt. Yeah. <laughs> she's still thinking about it. This okay. is shortly after they pooped on a boat, and so she is like, I don't want to be associated with them necessarily. <laughs> okay. okay. Up next, Ben Affleck yeah. introducing Nelly. Okay. he ha- Ben Affleck knows how important it is that he be fully, fully enthused for announcing Nelly. He understands the optics. He's going to be very excited, like he just walked into the club and saw Nelly performing. I think he's going to have the energy of somebody introducing like the poet laureate, like a seriousness, like it's time for you all to experience Nelly. Let's take a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, Nelly featuring Jaheem. Oh wow. Yeah, and that's oh, Nelly. Yeah, I whipped it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nelly featuring Jaheem. I whipped it completely. I, I whipped it as bad as Ben Affleck whipped it. I think Griffin kind of nailed it actually. Like yeah. brace yourselves. It's yeah. Nelly featuring Jaheem. It's time for the honored <laughs> guest. <laughs> Hell Ben. <laughs> Justin, you want to take a swing at like a good way to introduce Nelly? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is it Jaheem? 
Now uh, featuring yeah, Jaheem. Like, yes. Featuring yes. Jaheem, obviously. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Nelly featuring Jaheem. Whoa, that was good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, you li- you legally have to say ladies and gentlemen, even though folks don't necessarily rock like that anymore. Yeah, but, but that's I what did, Lauren, I know, Lauren I needs the, that. Yeah, I understand the difference, but this is... It's SNL, baby. It's SNL, it's baby. Show. It's the old time. <laughs> the old, the old, old, the old time, ways. Good time show. The old way. This one I'm excited to introduce to you because yeah. of the combination of these three people. Paul Giamatti introducing yes. Ludacris featuring some 41. Holy Stoked shit. out of his fucking mind. Shit. Stoked had, out of his gourd. If they had an orgy at the end of that, our podcast would be the baby. That's it's gonna sound, he's going to be so excited that the energy might come off as aggressive. Okay. Like he's he's so angry and happy to be announcing these This two. is my, this is my, okay, my prediction for this one, and I don't know why I feel this way, but I feel like Giamatti is bringing like corporate gig energy. Like oh. he had like, you know, I used to be big into wine, but ever since I tried Miller Lite, Seltzer's, Platinum, right. you know, that kind of deal. Let's take a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, Ludacris featuring Sum 41. Oh. Yeah, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Ludacris featuring Sum 41. That's how you do it, actually. Yeah, that's, that's like actually the best bringing tone. It. Yeah, that's good. That's I, I, I suspected a bit of frenzy would slip into his voice, but that was just like, let's get this place fucking right. right. Like, he, Im- he improved their performance by getting mm-hmm. the crowd psyched. And like, maybe did. they weren't psyched to do it, but then it was sort of like, you know what? We should give them the best show that yeah. we, yeah. we can. Mm-hmm. We should try our our absolute hardest. And then he went. He, then he goes and stands in front of the stage, like a foot away from them, and just like nods his head like vigorously. Like yes. he's so, and, and he he's starts like, conducting a yeah, little bit. Like, and they're like, "Why is he conducting Ludacris featuring Sum Forty One?" And he's like, "This is this isn't my usual thing, but these guys can really sh- these guys can really wail like <laughs> bruise on it." This like like before, this feels like before he went out, right? He was like, I don't know who either of these people are, and they had him like turn on some headphones and listen. Like, this is good, actually. I can get down to this. I think I get it. Okay, I'm ready. Up next, Bernie Mac introducing Good Charlotte. Huh. I think if this is close to the end of show, this is actually important information. Is this the first? music act or the second music act i don't and believe I don't any of these are second music i believe uh because okay. none of them contain like once again or welcome back or any kind of yeah reference that's a good point that's a good point because yeah, the second one is always always going to be everyone good charlotte like that here. level and they've left it all out on the court by that point yeah um i'm been like bemusement like mm. he's he th- he he believes that there he says there are people who like this music. It's not my favorite music, but yes. I recognize the. Art I actually of the crowd. completely agree with that energy. He's not like pumped about it because he knows that you're going to read that as phony. Yeah, but he's like he's happy for he's you. He's pleased for you. Yeah, let's take a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, good shot. Nope. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good shot. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> he's. He was eating a big meatball sub backstage, and they're like, hey, you have to go introduce Good Charlotte. And he's like, okay. okay. And he walked out there and said, it's Good Charlotte, and then walked back. And within 10 seconds, he had that sandwich right back in his mouth. Now, God these next two, I would actually rather not guess beforehand. Let's just listen and discuss them afterwards. Okay. This is Phil Hartman introducing Bush. Wow. Wow. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Bush. <laughs> Whoa. Bush. Oh man. It's like it's like he thinks that the band is going to spray a neurotoxin into the stu- into st- the studio. Yes. Justin can it- also see the video though. Justin, can you describe the He's uh, looking directly at you like he's a James Bond villain and you're James Bond and he's like he's just found out that your secret weakness is Bush. <laughs> yeah. And he's Isn't like, "Oh, you did, you know, well. Um uh, yeah, it's it's a it's like levels of intensity that I can't quite communicate to you. The, do you have the year that Phil Hartman introduced Bush? Oh no, I don't know the dates. That was 1996. Okay, is that good? I'm, is that good uh, or bad or how do you feel about that? Things were not great for Phil Hartman in 1996. Okay. So yeah, he may he have just been going through tough... some stuff. He was going through a time. Up next, Nathan Lane. Introducing Metallica. 
and just Yo, play it. Man. Yo, really? Yeah. This happened. Uh huh. Ladies and gentlemen, Metallica. That's yes, what I'm talking Nathan, about, Nathan. Yes, Nathan. Nathan. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the show, Nathan. Thank that you, Nathan. That is how it is done. You fucking consummate performer. Everyone, take notes. Take I notes from Nathan Lane. I don't know if Nathan Lane has ever listened to a Metallica song in his life, but that is like. A dad like introing his kid, like I yes, yeah, like he's yeah, driving you, and he just picked up Brady, and he, he yeah. opens the sliding door in the Odyssey, and he's like, "Brady, are you ready to go to <laughs> Detroit to see Metallica?" And right? listen, as long as we're sort of diving into the psyche of the get the hosts uh, of this show, 1997 was when this episode came out, around the same time that Nate Lane was in a little film called Mouse Hunt. Yeah, <laughs> he was he was rolling in the deep piles of mouse hunt money. And so right he was high like, too, and yeah, he could be he could be introducing anybody into like, ladies and gentlemen, Alanis Morissette. Like he would still put that stink on it, ladies and gentlemen, Metallica. So, I love it. If we next time we play in New York, could we pull strings to get Nathan Lane to introduce us in that exact oh in that God. exact way? God. That would be I incredible. Mean, Okay. I don't think I have a connection there, but I, I hope so. What a, I just gotta say, what a pro. What, what a, pro. a pro. Okay, one oh, no. last one. <laughs> oh no. And this is the <laughs> greatest one I've ever it's seen. It's not Adrian Brody, is it? No, no God, we're not no. allowed to play Adrian Brody, but like uh, if you've yeah. never seen that one, it oh, sucks you the probably moon should. out of the it's sky. The worst. Okay, here it is. Daniel Craig introducing The Weeknd. And now, don't play it yet. How do you think this one goes? Hmm. <sighs> I messed up and loaded it. I could see the video portion of this. Okay, um, well then let Griffin guess first. Yeah. I think he is overjoyed. Okay, okay. Justin, go ahead and play it. Ladies and gentlemen, The weekend. <laughs> now once again, <laughs> Justin can see the video. The weekend. It's like he can't believe someone is named The weekend. Yes. My theory, and Griffin, now I'm gonna yeah. send it to you because you gotta see it. My theory is that just before he went out, somebody told him the name, and he yeah. believed that he was introducing the actual like concept of that Saturday and possible, Sunday. Yes, that he was like the weekend. I I don't know. He, there's a shrug that goes with yes. it, like I, and he shakes his head like the weekend. The weekend. The weekend? It is. If he had so, put a question mark in it, it would have been a lot more powerful. This is worth. No it's worth noting that this, this, a lot of the the other ones have been from an account that's full of these sorts of things. Um, the, like, like uh, hosts introducing. This is an account that is called Craig Weekend mm -hmm. <laughs> that has 517,000 followers and they just tweet this every weekend. Yep, because he introduces the weekend. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> it is fun. That's a good game, Trav. Thanks. Hey, I enjoyed thank you. That, that trip down memory lane. I always love that juxtaposition of performer and host. Um, do you think there is any thought? To how that'll go? No, like, not at all. After Adrian Brody, there probably is. Yeah, a, probably is a little a bit. script you know, that you read. What's interesting to me is the, the tough part of constructing that game was trying to find any video where the host seemed enthusiastic. And it mm -hmm. was Nathan Lane. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Everybody else seems to range between like, I don't know, and like... I know it's weird that I'm saying it too. Yes. There was a pretty good bit one time where Harvey Keitel was the host and Madonna was the musical act. And he said, like, I was so excited <laughs> when I got here and I, and I just had this realization that, wow, I have a much more enthusiastic gay following than I realized. Because <laughs> <laughs> Madonna was there. It's good. Um, okay. So this is an advice show. Obviously. Okay. That, like, enough said, right? So what we do on this show is you send us your questions. I'm going to set it up. Oh, here's okay. the deal. Hey. Okay. Well, you send us your questions, mbmbam at maximumfund.org, and we will answer your uh, questions if you need advice. We will help you. Where there will be other skits. Skits okay. and bits, I would say. There'll be skits. Actually, I don't have any. There's no bits scheduled for this. Well, I just did kind of a bit. Okay, yeah, I guess. Okay, that's skit. Oh, did it? Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, let's get into it. Let's help people. I want to try to help more people than we have been helping 
because I feel like that's our real legacy. You know? Well, oh. spending uh, spending eleven minutes talking about SNL interests is a bad way to start. Yeah, in that fair, 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 fair. Hey, hey, it's been seventeen minutes. I told my boss that I have jury duty on Monday, which I normally have off. I gave the correct date, but the wrong day. It turns out my jury duty is on Tuesday, and I'll subsequently need that day off. A game that I'm openly a fan of is releasing on Tuesday. I don't want her to suspect that I'm trying to fake jury duty and actually taking off for video games. How do I break it to her that I got the day wrong without seeming suspicious? That's from Misremembered in Missouri. Hmm. I think that this might be like a quantum mechanics problem in which, Hmm. by which I mean the very, don't understand it, that I don't understand it. No, the very fact that you have, I don't think your boss would have thought this, but now that you're worried about it, you have caused through observation, this thing to change right Hmm. now, because now whatever energy you're going to bring to like, actually, uh, I got the, I got the day wrong. It's Tuesday will have an undercurrent of, I hope they don't think this is about me playing a video game, Mm. and they'll be able to smell it on you. Okay, a couple of good options. What's the game, first off? I gotta figure, I mean, what? Yeah, I was looking through recent game releases. I mean, is it COD? I don't know. It might be COD. They might need well, those. Well, this is a new question. Gotta be Hold a on. franchise, because why would you be... I was about to say, why would you be a fan of a new game that hasn't released yet? But people do that all the time, it seems enough to yell at people on the internet about it. Yeah. So, so. Let's see. Uh, let's assume it's Call of Duty, because I don't like. No, I can't be bothered. And we all love it. Like, we, we, all, like, need it. we all love, love Call of Duty. It. Zero problems with it. Love how serious yeah, it is and like, like, not fun. Love it's it. really cool. Um, so, okay. Here's my options. One, loudly... Like start get a video game magazine from the newsstand uh-huh. and just be like, oh, can't believe this. This new Call of Duty stinks. They said no, you shouldn't even get it. Yes, that's one way to so try to decrease. But like, I wouldn't do that. Here's what I do. Why did He's, you even? Say, why did you even say it? Hey, because yeah. this next one's a little more treacherous. But then, but oh, Justin, okay. why even introduce such a shitty idea? You could here's the because this next one's treacherous. Oh. And I need to say that you should definitely do the first one before I mention that you should definitely do the second one. Okay. Hire someone to come in and intimidate you. Whoa. Wait, what? At your place of business. Awesome. Hire someone to come in and intimidate you. Be like, you know, Paul, I you know, I heard that you I, you know, Paul Calcutta is a good guy, and I think he would never run a red light. Don't you think, Mr. Guy who loves having all his teeth? Oh. And then cracks his knuckles like, that's what Paul Calcutta is means to me. Wink. What does Paul Calcutta mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> does he mean, when you think, when you hear the name Paul Calcutta, what do you think? Do you think innocence? Me too. Yeah, me too. Well, that. <sighs> The juror wouldn't know the n- name, I think, right? I've never had jury duty, so well, I don't he know. does well, now. All, you're going to have to fake it. A lot of it. <laughs> a lot of it's going to be staged. Yeah. So they're not going to have any way of checking up on Paul Calcutta and, and his case and if the oh. name is Paul Calcutta or any of that. Okay, wait. One step further, Justin. And then- One step further yeah. than that? Then the intimidating- We're already in felony territory. The intimidating yeah. person says, so if I was you, I'd just stay home and play your little video game you're so excited <laughs> about. And then, wait, no, hear me out, hear me out. And then Clash Dasher goes, No. As much as yeah. I love that video game, I love Justice more. I will not be intimidated. Paul Calcutta is going down. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And then your boss call is his like, dad. Yeah, call Paul Calcutta's dad on the phone and let me tell him to tell say his goodbyes. Yeah. No, you know what? I'll call him. Hey, I'll call him. I Give got, me Paul Calcutta's dad's phone number. I just wanted to check to make sure that um, I had prepaid for that video game so I can pick it up before <laughs> jury duty. Okay, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Okay, thank you, Perfect. bye. Thanks. Yeah, I told his dad what's up. I said, <laughs> fuck you, Mr. Now, Calcutta. Now, here, <laughs> now here, here's another thing I'll say. There is a way that, you know, por que no los dos. Oh? Like, you, if you go to jury duty Tuesday morning and you're like, <laughs> This man's guilty. Yeah. Uh-huh. I can, I, don't even let him open his mouth. Everybody, we can all see it, right? 
<laughs> we know this man's guilty. Throw the proverbial book at him. Five years. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Well, that's a great day, everybody. Good juring. I gotta get I gotta get home. The download's almost completed. And uh I'm gonna crank crank it out. Oh no, I got Steam Link. It's fine. <laughs> Guys, yeah. I got Steam Link. It's totally yeah, cool. go ahead it's and fine. do your trial from trial started. Start over, child. Start over. <laughs> I got Steam Link. Sorry, hey, anyone else think this? Anyone else think this guy's got big stabbing energy? I do. Judge, he's do covered in blood. What are you talking about? Oh, you judge, can't do see it. Do a guilty. It? Do a guilty now, Judge. <laughs> you can say it. We can all go home and play Call of Duty. Oh fuck yeah! Is that out today? Yeah, it's out today. <laughs> yeah, it's out today. <laughs> I hold myself in contempt. <laughs> We haven't started. What? We haven't started yet. What? You can't handle the truth. I'm. I'm leaving. You can't leave. You can't go. <laughs> Someone fingerprint the judge. <laughs> <laughs> he's got I don't want suspicious to, eyes. He's got big stabber. If energy. I don't touch the evidence, how do I know it's not a hologram? <laughs> mm-hmm. We don't mean that, judge. Hey. Could it have been the Riddler? I said Riddle, and we all thought it, didn't we? Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, how do you know I'm not a judge? Huh? <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Prove hey, I'm not. We didn't vote on who the judge would be. <laughs> Can I be the <laughs> bailiff just... this time? I'm not sure what he does, but I always like bull on night court. Uh-huh. Several times during your, your interview to see if you're a suitable juror, just stand up and produce a knife from your pocket and stab it into the table like in 12 Angry Men. Yeah. And when they're like, yeah, that's nothing right now. You're like, oh, sorry. And then you do it like five minutes later, like, shit, I, you guys got to tell me when it's time for me to stab my little knife into the table. Oh, and keep trying to introduce evidence into the case. I want to introduce, <laughs> that's a Subway coupon with like six punches out of it. Exactly. I think we all know what this means. I only need four more punches till I get a free foot long. Interesting, isn't it? What a coincidence. Uh, How about another question? Yeah, sure. I don't have a dog, but I love dogs. Nice. When I see them out and about, I wave at them. Only get an uncomfortable wave from their owner. Mm. How can I wave to just a dog without getting weird looks from humans? That's from Incidental Dog Walker Stalker in Denver. You cannot. Love Denver. You can't do this thing. Yeah, you got to wink. Okay. Nope, not that well, either, Well, because the actually. wave is too big, right? But you can do like a, hey, we're in this together, wink, you know, kind of little thing. So what I used to do when I worked at PetSmart and I'd see a dog and like, I didn't want to talk to the owner, but I wanted the dog to know that I was glad they were there. Yeah. Little yeah. wink. Little wink. Can they pound it? Um, you can they tap, can go yeah. To, they could go to the pound. No, come on. All right, Griffin. That's bad, like prison for naughty. dogs. That's prison You're right. for dogs. Um, the thing about the wave or the wink is, the wink is nothing, but the problem with the wave is that's a human greeting. Oh, right. Fair. Yeah, just so if you want to, if if you want to smell, well, you can't smell the butt because the unless you're like really sneaky, like, and I'm talking Sam Fisher, very ninja sneaky. Okay. Got um, it. can you smell the dog's butt from far away and have the dog know it? You oh, know what I mean? Like just a sign of just like like a wave is kind of like a long distance high five when you think about it. So like you kind of yeah. sniff like it was a butt. And they're like, yeah, oh, I but got that's, it. But the problem with that is that it's very gross. Mm, this is true. Hmm. This um, is true. Maybe when you wave and the human waves back, say like, that wasn't for you. Yeah. That was for him. You know, it's a, kind of a power move is to have a dog treat. And then you walk up and you're like, oh, hey, I just happen to have this dog treat in my pocket. Can I give it to your dog? At that point, the dog is like, hey, if you say no to this, I'll yeah. eat you in your sleep. Yeah. I'm and out. so then you... I'm I'm out. I will. I am now this person's dog. It is that quick. It is that easy, Jeremy. Do you see? <laughs> this could happen like that, Jeremy. And I'm gone. Yeah. All these years spent together over down the toilet. I forget what begging strips taste like, Jeremy. So just think about that. Do you um, remember how you gave me some sort of pill this morning? They would never do that, Jeremy. They they, they would are never made of give me medicine. Strips. Um. All right. Asked and answered. I feel like. I yeah, hope well, that helps. Just throw a um, link. Do you want to do another question? Or I do have a. I do have a phone line that connects me directly to the clouds where the wizard lives. Um. Yeah. Let's do. Let's do that before the money zone. Okay. <laughs> Why a, not? A lot of people sent this one in. It's uh. It's on WikiHow, and it's just. I guess nobody wrote it. It doesn't have anything. Did I write um, it? You may have written it. I mean, if no one's gonna claim it, I'll claim it. This is how to get rid of a nickname, and it's awesome. Ooh, yeah, people how develop to get nicknames. rid of a nickname. Yeah, I hate my nickname. 
and I want a new one. Well, good news. This article is going to tell you exactly that. Um, so we're going to start with part one, challenging the nickname. And there's Whoa. a picture here of uh, a person walking, and they're wearing cargo shorts and a, a hip sort of rugby shirt. And um, they look a lot like Zach Morris, mm-hmm. okay. which is only notable because in the picture, there's a gentleman in the foreground who's yelling, Zach attack! Oh, no. Um, huh. And the, the tip here is don't answer to a nickname you don't like. If Ooh. someone started calling you by a mean nickname or something you don't like, the first step is to not respond. Okay, that's yeah. cool. If you're Zach Morris Shut and someone down. yells, Zach attack, and you don't even acknowledge them, they're going to probably follow you for a while going, Zach attack? Why wouldn't you like the nickname Zack Attack? That kind of rules. Let's not listen. Everybody okay, you're likes right, you're right, you're shit. Right. Here's the problem, though. What You're entering into a battle of wills, right, at that point. Because if the other person is deeply committed to that becoming your nickname, it's yeah. not going to be a one-time thing, right? They're going to try to, like, catch you off guard. Because if your yes. name is Zack, and they're like, Zack, and you start to turn, and then they go, attack. And you're like, ah, yeah. damn it, I looked. <laughs> this is going to freak this person's bean, though. If they're like, Zach attack, Zach Please. attack, Zach attack. They're going to go to someone and be like, either I'm a ghost, mm-hmm. or Zach attack is a ghost. I'm afraid and Zach attack one of is those a ghost. Two. Okay, ask friends to stop using a nickname. That's an easy one. Good friends will understand and don't want to hurt your feelings. You could say, guys, I know you think it's funny to call me Zach attack, but I really don't like that nickname. Just call me Zachary, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Deal with a bully, but uh, that is calling you a nickname. If they're calling you, a, if it's a bully, it'll be harder to confront them. Just ignore them and let them see it hasn't got to you, right? It feels it like it has, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Takes their power away. No, not if you do pretend good enough. If bullies call you a name, show them you're not intimidated or scared by looking them in the eyes, laughing, and just walking away without looking back. Or you could say something like, here we go again, this is boring, or uh, why ooh. are you talking to me? Ooh. I like that last one a lot, actually. But then the next one is, I don't know why you keep calling me that, but it's boring and I don't care. Me thinks the Zack attack <laughs> do protest a th- a too much. Yeah, uh, that one might not have the power you're hoping for there of, this yeah. is boring, what do you, uh, this isn't for you. Wait, hold on, Zack Attack. Did you think I was calling you Zack Attack for your entertainment? Because it's yeah. for my entertainment. Was that not clear how this transaction was playing out? Oh, let me explain, Zack Attack. I'm a bully. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> we are I not I you threat you to define myself. Yes. Right. Because I am a very uh, small person in my heart. And so mm-hmm, yeah. I need to feel big by making you feel bad. And now that you've engaged with me and said that it makes you feel bored, uh, that's actually a negative thing, so I'm I'm fine with that. Actually, yeah. So. Any any sort of thing that I can do to sort of steal your shine, yeah, would right. be amazing. I'm a hater. I, <laughs> what don't you get, bud? I'm a hater. And now I'm, I'm drinking gonna, haterade. I love it. I'm gonna, I live for I'm it. I'm gonna kick you in the butt. Yeah, that's I right. It. And I don't care if you like that either, Zach. Oh, sorry. Wait. Yeah. That felt good. Wait, Zach. Zach, Zach? kicking Zach? me in the butt. So boring. Why don't you leave? <laughs> Why are you Why kicking you... me in the butt? Why don't you go away from me, stinker? Introduce yourself at the start. Just introduce yourself casually by saying, hey, everyone, I'm Jill. Um, I don't know that I've introduced myself in a while, not because I'm big shit, but also that I don't... Um, meet people. Meet people. Well, that's and why so I, when I, yeah. when I do, I, re- I, I like require a, a hype person. Not even a hype person, but somebody who can literally... Just, a, a hype person to the extent that B- Bernie Mac is a hype person. For was. good Charlotte. Oh, I was see, a good yeah. hype person for yeah. So just somebody who say, uh, everybody in this room, Griffin. And then you they can expectation setter. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, so um, that's interesting because I was going to suggest a Herald, which I think I've suggested quite often on this show. A, a few times. But it would be nice to just have somebody like as like an like a human autocorrect that when yeah. someone's like, Hey Bobby, and they just lean and go, It's Bob. Hey that's Bobby, good. Hey, it's Bob. Maybe you could get a cameo from Paul Giamatti just saying, hey, everyone, here's Griffin. And then you can, like, uh, you know, hack into the speaker system of any party you're yeah, at yeah, yeah. and just play that as you walk in. That's good. Oh, get a um, cameo from Nathan Lane that's like, he's only going by Griffin. And then, yeah. like, you can play that anytime someone's like, what's up, Griffy? And you're like, mm, hold on, let me pull mm, up Hold this on, wait a second. Right? I have a very important cameo from Nathan Lane I have to show you. <laughs> uh and also, last thing, remember that nicknames don't last forever. And then there's a picture well, of a woman saying, little Zacky, to a little boy. And then as a grown-up, <laughs> she's like, 
Zachary. It's all she says is Zachary. And then there's a period. And she looks pretty serious. So like, but Zachary is smiling. So it looks like his his uh, older mother is saying, Zachary, we I can't need to talk to you. It's something along those lines. <laughs> Zachary, I'm happy to present Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just Zachary? Here is Bush. Can we just say that saying nicknames don't last forever is uh, a complete lie? Because there are many like like people throughout history. It's like Stonewall Jackson. I've got no idea what that dude's first name is. I know. I know. Yeah. Yep. You could. There's so many. I bet there's there's war heroes out there that you walk around and they, they were like in World War One or whatever. And it's like, tell me the story, Grandpa. About your friend? Oh, you mean Big Boner Joe? Like, because that's what they called him out there. It that was rough worse, out in the that trenches. That could be worse. It could be worse, I guess. You I'm mean little saying, little boner Bobby? How are none of the suggestions in this, like, try to come up with a different, better nickname? Well, I think they just, who, if your name is Zachary, that's all I would want to be called. Fuck yeah, Zachary. Zachary. Yeah. Especially Not if your Zach- last name is Levi, and you could be Zachary Levi, star yeah. of Shazam. Why wouldn't if, you be Zachary Levi, star of Shazam? If your name was Zachary Snackery, oh, and people yeah. like, here comes, here comes Zach Attack, and I would be like, fucking, re- do you guys know my last name? Just call me uh, Zach Snack, if nothing else. Like, But don't do that. Please call me by my full Christian name. Holy shit. If your name is Zachary out there, by the way, I just gave you a pretty good nickname of Snackery. Um, <laughs> that one works at pretty much every age, so. And they could call you Zachary. So, like, is Zach Attack that bad? Yeah, it's pretty, bro- it's pretty rough. Any more, Griff? Of Zachary nicknames? Yeah. Um, let me think. Shackery. Oh, that's pretty good. Mm. John Zachary. What if you like got went with a cameo idea, right? But it was like a live action cameo, and you paid like, uh, let's say like John Stamos, right, to like walk by you and and say like, oh, hey man, you've got a really cool vibe. What's your name?" And you say Zachary, and John Stamos goes, "Zachary, what an amazing name! Why would anyone call you anything other than Zachary?" This fake conversation's going on so long, so long, it's so uh, long. Quick, I'm gonna no, listen, get. I can get us out. We're going to the money zone. Come on. I'm going to stay here with John Stamos. Brooklyn and. Oh, no, I was going to do it. Sorry, tough. But Brooklyn and makes great sheets and I love them. No, see, you don't even know what you're talking about. Brooklyn and actually makes great sheets and everybody loves them, but it's beyond. Uh, sheets. They got something for everybody on your gift list. You want a weighted blanket and a nice cozy robe? They did a fun thing where they you they could let you pick somebody to send a gift to. That's fun. And I sent. I know. I sent a t shirt to my wife Sydney, and she was very weirded out because what did I do this for? Yeah, yeah. And I, I sent said, it to me. I said, "Open the box, and you'll see." And it's a very comfortable black t shirt, and she put it on right there in the kitchen. You know what she said? Best t-shirt I ever wore. Wow. Best black t-shirt I ever wore, I think she said. It's so, so nice that the romance is still alive after all these years. Still Justin. alive. Because, you know, sometimes it's it's easy to remember to buy plain black t-shirts for your loved ones early on in the relationship. But mm-hmm. it's so easy to let that kind of flame die out. Um, and it's so good to hear that you are still <sighs> delivering the heat. After all these and years. it's a great place to find a gift. And uh, it's not just linens either. They got candles, eye masks, and accessories. Just, everything, it, everything that you need to cosplay as Candle Boy, the nighttime friend. <laughs> <laughs> so go check out the gift guide to find the perfect present at every price point. Go to brooklinen.com and use the promo code My Brother to get twenty dollars off with the minimum purchase of a hundred dollars. That's b r o o k l i n e n dot com and enter promo code My Brother. Brooklyn.com promo code my brother. Can I tell Guys, I you? Open, I what? know. No. I open I just wanted to say I opened a Ooh. Stitch Fix box earlier this week and it was a fiver. I kept all five Ooh, pieces. Oh yeah. Whoa. Listen, yeah, I, want, I, I usually keep a majority of them, but a, a, you know, a fiver you gotta talk about. This is the time for me when Stitch Fix really shines. Mm. And that is my friend's sweater weather. Because oh. I don't know how they do it, 
but every sweater Stitch Fix has ever sent me is a keeper. It's that yeah. chunky sweater. Like, they know me so well at this point. They sent me a sweater one time that just putting it on, and I can't explain it, makes me feel like one of the assassins from Assassin's Creed. It, I don't, it's a hooded sweater. I think Does it have knives of, in it? I don't know, Griffin, but there's something about it that makes me want to skulk. Yeah. And listen, that's because my size, my style, it's all my own. It's about what suits me and what suits the moment. And that's the thing, man. You go to a store and you're like, none of these clothes are for me. This is not my store. What am I doing here? This is not my beautiful life. And that's why Stitch Fix is great because they get to know you. They ask you questions. You answer them. You pick stuff you like. And they start to tailor their choices based on what you want and your lifestyle and all that stuff. So whether you're looking for a brand you love or you want to try something new, you can try Stitch Fix Freestyle. It's a style destination where you can discover and- Well, my name is Stitchix, and I'm here to say that okay. I love Whoa. giving clothes in a major way. Don't sure. look at me when I change my pants, but you can drop this beat and you could do that dance. There you my go. name is Stitchix, and I like to do lots of stuff, like even shoes or socks or belts or neckties too. Come on, my friend. I got some clothes for you. That was really good, Griffin. Thanks, yeah. Really, yeah. really, really good. Yeah, I actually, they, um, I, they paid me for that. They were like, hey, didn't you sue songs for the ads? And I was like, fuck yeah, give me 50 bucks. Okay. Yeah. They sent me a $50 Stitch Fix uh, gift card, which I was like, good enough. So with Stitch Fix Freestyle, you get to pick your items and buy them specially curated to your style. And so you can still get the box. That's great. Love the box. And then you can also buy items that match your style, likes, and lifestyle. And there's no subscription required, and they offer free shipping, returns, and exchanges. So get started today by filling out your style quiz at stitchfix.com slash mybrother. That's stitchfix.com slash mybrother to try Stitch Fix Freestyle. stitchfix.com slash mybrother. Look, it's a rough world out there, especially lately. I get it. So let's take care of our minds as best we can. I'm John Moe, host of Depression Mode with John Moe. Every week, I talk with comedians, actors, writers, musicians, doctors, therapists, and everyday folks about the obstacles that our world and our brains throw in front of us. Depression, anxiety, traumatic stress, all those mental health challenges that are way more common and more treatable than you might think. The first time I went to therapy, I was so ashamed, and I was like, I can't believe I gotta go into therapy. Like, I thought I could be a man, and Humphrey Bogart was never in therapy. And then my dad said, yeah, but he smoked a carton of cigarettes a day. Give your mind a break, give yourself a break, and join me for Depression Mode with John Moe. I heard the breath, yeah. Justin. I, I heard yeah. the I heard the yeah. squad breath. I heard the yeah. breath, Justin. And it was yep. like you took the yep. breath. Yep. You took yep. the breath and you realized no one else. Yep, 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 I want to munch. Squad. Squad. Dun, 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 dun. I want to munch. Do hoss. Wait, but it's not It's not October anymore. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's podcast within podcast profiling. The latest and greatest in We've here's the first thing I say to you people. <laughs> yes, everyone tweeted me about Arby's making vodka. Listen, folks, this is much squad, it's not the thirsty zone. Okay, no, we are thirsty that for it for sawbones. Yes, it's the thirsty zone. Okay, Arby's drops limited edition curly fry and crinkle fry vodka. Is vodka based on their fries? Okay. This is Munch Squad. We have standards. We do? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try to get some of it, okay? <laughs> I'm try. I'm trying to get some of you, it. I'm going to try to get some of it, okay? All right. I'm going to need you to do, uh, by the way, like a tasting video of that um, with Sydney, because you'll lie and say it's good to seem cool, and Sydney will be honest. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? Like, this is what I want to try to get across. On Munch Squad, I try to make a difference, and there's a, if there's an exception, I'll mention it. But I don't like these companies just doing things to get the headlines oh, from I Munch see. Squad. I yeah. see. They're just wanting the attention from Munch Squad. Arby's doesn't think one good thing for Arby's would be vodka. You know what I mean? Like, they don't think they're doing the right thing. With so it. when you say thirsty zone, it's not just about drinks, right? They're acting thirsty, right? They're acting thirsty. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, no, no. I should have been more clear about that from the beginning. I see that now. 
Why do you? I see it too. Oh, what? I saw it from a million miles away fucking... with my incredible vision. Wait, God, I heard does Count sneaking Donut me. have supervision? Well, in my bad form, I have echolocation. No, okay, yeah, but wait that's... a minute. If you, no, wait. If you killed Justin to do this oh, bit, no. it was completely silent and outrageously fast. I think it's more of a. Yes, I used incredibly fast acting poison. I used Kiorori. Ah. Incredible fast acting poison. Okay. Now, the modern beast thing. The modern beast thing. <laughs> The modern beast thing. Here's the problem. I'm getting confused by the Count Donut lore because I can't tell if he dies in you like a Jekyll and Hyde thing or if you're... He dies, his body dies temporarily, by which I mean his soul is sent to hell. Uh-huh. I Whoa, then wait, what? control his body. Yeah. Sorry, spoiler. And then control his body to uh, bring you the latest donut news. Okay. And then I evacuate him back into the night, or in this case, the 11-15. But I really like, listen, Count Donut, I enjoy your presence, but I did not realize it came with the cost of my older brother being temporarily in hell. Yeah, hell sucks, you, dude. It's, but when he comes back, he appreciates things so much. Oh, okay, that's what that. okay. so. You, you guys are like a fight club? Uh, yeah. You know, fight club, one scene, completely you know this unironic. Scene? Yeah. Do you know this one scene where they pull the gun on the man and then they say he will love breakfast tomorrow? And it's supposed to be a it's good like thing this. that like you learn like, oh, nice, one. dude. Yes, in the educational documentary fight. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to talk about donuts, not Chuck Palahniuk. What? Chuck Palahniuk. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Krispy Kreme has announced it. Halloween is over, and on Justin's birthday, November, also 8th, Travis's. a very special day to Justin. That's also mine. Krispy Kreme announced their Thanksgiving donut collection. What? Krispy Kreme is encouraging Americans to share gobbles of gratitude (laughs) 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 with no donuts this Thanksgiving season as boy this is uh, quite (laughs) unfriendly sorry one second I need to get my composure It as 80% of respondents in the national survey say celebrating Thanksgiving is more important than in previous years. Oh boy. What? Why? <laughs> and nearly half are planning to attend more Thanksgiving celebrations than they did before the COVID-19 what? pandemic. Yes, good. Hooray, says Krispy Kreme. People are doing a worse job than they did before. They're getting even more nasty than they did before COVID was a thing. Just pack them in like sardines and cranberry sauce. They're nuts off. <laughs> Fantastic. I love this. I love suffering. You do? Thanksgiving is more important than previous years. Here's a quote from Dave Skinner, the chief marketing officer for Krispy Kreme. Listen. We missed out on so much last year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Aww. Yeah. laughs> Including Thanksgiving celebrations. This Thanksgiving, people have a desire and need to be together more often and more so than any other Thanksgiving. Nastier. And nastier and rubbing more. <laughs> more rubbing. A lot, a lot more dry humping this year. Sneeze right on me, Nani. So <laughs> we're creating a way to share your gratitude with others in the most delicious way possible. Because nothing says thank you for having me to Thanksgiving like a box of donuts you bought the day before Thanksgiving. Because there's no way they're open. <laughs> According to a new survey. Even during this cooking and baking filled holiday, Uh 56% of consumers plan to spend less traditional time in the kitchen. Okay. (laughs) In order to spend overdue time with missed family and friends. That is a wild sentiment. That's a wild stunt. More than that. I wish Justin was here to talk about this because that's. A truly wild statistic. I don't know how I'm supposed to gain. Literally, I feel like I understand everything less than I did before I read that statistic. No insight has been imparted to me. I love that the insight Krispy Kreme took away, though, was like, okay, spend less time in the kitchen so you can spend more time with your family. 
So they want to buy donuts from Krispy Kreme to include in Thanksgiving. The, the idea that lunchtime comes around and everybody sits at the table and they're like, all right, guys, time to eat. And then everybody just kind of looks at one another like, who, um, <laughs> who, cooked, uh, who cooked food for us? Like, oh, no. No, none of us spend any time in the kitchen. Wanted to enjoy your presence. Yeah. So Krispy Kreme, according to this new song, uh-huh. uh, I love when the brand feels it needs science to justify the fact they made the fucking cranberry donut. I've never heard the you cuss before. Said it was donut. wise for us to do this. Our top top scientists. We didn't want to, but si- we follow the science. We took this survey so we could prove to you that we don't need to make Thanksgiving donuts. And you all were like, nah, give me those fucking nasty donuts. This is, this is the problem. Krispy Kreme started giving out donuts to vaccinated people. Mm. But once you start following science, you cannot stop. Yeah, right. No one warns you that you're giving away everything at the altar of science. So here's the donuts, right? Pecan pie. Sure. What do they say about this one? Pecan pie lovers will rejoice over this iconic original glazed donut dipped in delicious butter tart filling, then sprinkled with candied pecans and pie crust crumbles. I'm glad. Yeah, all right. So glad. So the audience for that one is people who like pumpkin pie. But it's nice for them to finally have something to be happy over because there hasn't been a lot of new innovation for pecan pie lovers Over the last, like, forever, like, they got the pumpkin pie, and they're like, this is great. I can't wait to see what comes next. And then no one really ever did anything with it. And finally, something for them. You know what I mean? Right. Krispy Kreme guests can also express gratitude to loved ones, friends, and others by packaging their Thanksgiving collection donuts in Krispy Kreme's custom gratitude box while supplies last. Which features a space to share gobbles of gratitude oh with someone special via a note on top. So I can't, you can't see this, of course, but what it is is a box from Krispy Kreme that has a white part at the top that says grateful for you because, and then a blank space. So Krispy Kreme says, congratulations, we've done this for you. We've made it easier than ever to share your gratitude. Uh, son. Just get the Sharpie and go to town. Son, I just want to know, I, I know I've never said it before. I just have never had the words, but now that I have this box, I can finally tell you. Well, just read it. Uh, okay, Dad, it says, uh, I'm grateful for you because I love you. Yeah, that's right. But uh, I did eat half the donuts on my way over here out of nervousness, so I am mm-hmm. sorry about that. So I was so nervous to admit. So anyway, that's the donut news. Goodbye. Goodbye, Count sleep, Donut. Sleep tight. Uh, wait, what? Hold on. Now we have to cut out the twelve minutes of screaming that Justin does whenever he gets brought back from hell. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Juice, are you done? Hey, sorry, guys. Yeah, no, I know you lose yourself in the. How in was that. hell this time? Yeah, did you what? see anyone cool? Um, it 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 was all cold and frozen, so the Eagles must have a new album. Oh, hey, <laughs> wow, top of call, you know, Christ great Almighty, Eagles reference. Are we still to in hell? Help. I want to start again. Okay. Yeah, okay. I want to do that. Let me do that. Joke. Okay, take okay, another okay. run up at it. <sighs> hey, Justin. Hey, Juice. How was hell this time, bud? Yeah, it was fine. Did you see anyone cool? Okay. No. Okay. All right. That a was different. good. I don't like this bit. No, I, you me, can't come up with a good joke above it. Yeah. Tell me you literally you could have said anyone's name, and it, that would have been fine. Who did you see down there? Anyone. And it's fine. anyone. Any bad. Okay. Any all right. Bad, let me try again. Let me try person. again. Let me do a real. Jo- I'm going to do a real okay, joke. Okay. <gasps> hey, uh, Juice. Hey, how was hell? Did yeah. you see anyone cool down there? Crip Keeper. See, uh, Crip Keeper good. was in hell. <laughs> That's interesting because he's Wait. done stories for us. Is he inherently <laughs> bad? I didn't. I never thought of him as like the like the antagonist. You look at him, you know he's oh, bad. Oh, excuse he's me, what? Got hell. Excuse me, what? Yeah, you look at him and you know he's bad, Justin. Canonically, canonically, mm. yes. Why does he know all these scary stories? You don't tell stories like that to good people. You tell them to evil people that are going to real Christian hell. You learned them yeah. from his mima. Meemaw's in hell, too. What? Hey, thanks for listening. No, not, Judith, not <laughs> Judith Keeper. That's <laughs> <laughs> she was so active in the DAR at her church. She did so uh, much listen. for the community. 
Thanks for listening. What was her last secret time advice, you, Justin? Last time what? you were in hell, you said you saw Limbaugh, but I was like, you were only in hell for a minute, dude. There's no way of all the people down there that you saw like a big a big one like that. Statistically, oh, and there's no way. And now you're no telling me you way. saw Crypt and Judith Keeper? Were they together? Yeah. No, that's the worst oh, part Oh, no. It. They didn't know each other were down there because they couldn't recognize each other. Oh, down well, they, don't they look the same? So the five people you meet in uh-huh. hell yeah. are, so far, Rush Limbaugh. If you're light, if you're <laughs> lucky. Keeper, and Judith Keeper. Yeah, yeah. right. But th- you know that they can earn their way back to heaven if they love each other hard enough. That is true. I've, I've seen that when the dreams Bible. they come. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, thanks for listening to our podcast. We very much appreciate it. Uh, we've had a good time. We hope that you've enjoyed yourself as well. We helped two um, whole people. Yeah. Yes, a great job. A great job. Hey, we have a lot of very special announcements that I want to share with you. I'm going to move through them quickly, all right? New merch, McElroyMerch.com. We just put out a set of Adventure Zone dice designed by artist and maker Aaron Jean, uh, who is also known as Evelyn. It comes with a bag with the Bureau of Balance logo on it. They're awesome. Uh, also out is the Till Death Do Us Blart t-shirt designed by Tyler Reed, which benefits First Nations Development Institute. We also have the Wizard of the Cloud pin of the month designed by Dana Wagner, which benefits Native Women Lead. Uh, we have the Candle Lights ornament designed by Kate May, which benefits the Harmony House. Uh, and of course, there's all the other merch on there, including a mug for Candlelight. So check that out. Tickets for our shows at Emerald City Comic Con are on sale now. Uh, my Brother, My Brother, Me on December 2nd and Taz on December 3rd. Both shows are general attendance, so there's no assigned seating, but ADA seating will be available. You do not need an Emerald City Comic Con badge to buy tickets to these shows. Uh, ECCC safety protocols require proof of full vaccination or recent negative COVID test to attend. In addition, masks are required while on premises and capacity will be reduced. Uh, more info and ticket links available at bit.ly slash tour, and the full safety protocols are available at bit.ly slash ECCC safety. Uh, and We've started the Zone of Adventure Imbalance series. It's out on our YouTube now. Episode two will be out on Wednesday. Uh, adventure, it's an Adventure Zone mini series DM'd by Abria Aingar, who is uh, at Quitty on Twitter. And we're returning to balance. Three episodes, one per week. Just check out YouTube, uh, search for The McElroy Family, or go to youtube.com slash The McElroy Family. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Uh-huh. And thank you to Montaigne. For the use of our theme song, My Life is Better with You, a powerful track uh, that's changing the world, I that's would true. say, changing people's hearts and minds and ears and brains. That's very true. Also, thank you to Rachel, our editor, uh, who yes. helps us make this show not sound like dump, which I really Yeah, well, I'm going to say put in some fucking work on this one. Yeah, like, definitely. really this did one, a lot. If you all had heard the original of this one, you would, your stomachs would. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. Choice. Yeah. Mm. Well, bye. Okay, bye. Walk, 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 walk. Door slam. Wait a minute. The the final Yahoo. We yeah. We forgot. Door open. Yeah. Walk, 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 walk. Wait, guys. We forgot to do the final Yahoo. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I got it right here. Pulled up. I printed it out. Okay. All right. Let's hear it. <laughs> You're really walking walking into it like backwards. Sort here's, of. My, here's the paper that it's written on. And I'll that send you guys like... a picture of it later so you know it's real. Sounds yeah. like real it's, paper. Uh, this one was sent in by Danielle. Um, fish, fish, Fischl. Fischl. Yeah. Fischl. TV's Topanga. Um, she doesn't like that when you call her that. Okay. Like, she knows that she played a character named Topanga, but, like, she's her own. Twice. She On like Boy it. Meets World and Girl Meets World. Yeah. You know, she just doesn't like She just it. doesn't like it when you call her that. Okay. Anyway, this one's asked by Funky David. <laughs> Sorry, Funky yeah, David. Yeah, Funky you David said. asks Anyone got any funky soup recipes? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. He's on brands. Oh man. I just clicked through to his profile. That's so weird. He's got, they're all kind of like that, though. Like, any funky tips for planning your own funeral? Yeah, like, it's, it's cool you know what shit I mean? like that. I feel yeah. like my funky wife and I have grown a funky part. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, my name's Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. 
This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported. You're in the theater. The lights go down. You're about to get swept up by the characters and all their little details and interpersonal dramas. You look at them and think, that person is so obviously in love with their best friend. Wait, am I in love with my best friend? That character's mom is so overbearing. Why doesn't she stand up to her? Oh, good God. Do I need to stand up to my own mother? We never know when we'll see ourselves in a movie, but that search for recognition is exactly what we're going to talk about on the podcast, Feeling Seen, with me, Jordan Cruciola. Each episode, we'll bring in a guest to talk about the films that they see themselves in and also the ways that movies have fallen short. So join me every Thursday for the Feeling Seen podcast here on Maximum Fun or wherever you find your podcasts. Podcasts.